Whoa, 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 whoa. What's this? Another summer movie? No, 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 no. Uh, what am I doing here? Uh, the summer movie season is over. Thank you. I said so in my last review. The, the summer ended with Kubo, and the fall movie season starts next week with Sully, so what could... Oh, okay. Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel, and it looks like I sounded the death bell for summer 2016 a little prematurely, because here comes Don't Breathe, a very lean and very mean thriller, horror, whatchamacallit, which pits three morally bankrupt robbers against one scary blind mofo in a brutal battle to the death. Those looking for purely white-knuckle thrills will find more than their fair share, as the film directed by Evil Dead rebooter Fede Alvarez keeps finding new ways to ratchet up the tension and turn up the heat on the audience and the characters, as long as you never stop to contemplate exactly whom to root for or ask yourself certain logistical questions on your way out of the theater. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. The setup is simple. There's this girl delinquent named Rocky. There's this douchebag guy who's dating her and a bright, sweethearted guy who really wishes that he was. Together, the three of them rob houses. So right away, the movie has to work really hard to try to make these three people sympathetic. See, Rocky just wants to get her little sister out of Detroit and move her to California. You know, like everyone else in Detroit. And the other two gentlemen want to go with her if she ever gets up the nerve or the bankroll to do so. So, uh, is that enough to root for these kids to go rob the house of a blind guy? No? Well, what if we made the blind guy a really, really evil dude? Would that get you on board? Anyway, the film's deficiencies start with this setup, with the simple fact that these people don't belong there. They don't have any good reasons for doing what they're doing. They're delinquents. They're morally bankrupt. And it's not till a good way into the movie that you realize that their Mark, a really scary piece of work played by Stephen Lang, who specializes in those kind of roles, is also pretty repugnant. So for a very long while, our protagonists are on the wrong side of the audience's sympathy. Look, horror movies, and make no mistake, this one is closer to a horror movie than anything else, have a certain internal morality to them, and Don't Breathe deviates from that, and sort of flounders in some pretty morally murky waters when it comes to the characters it has set us up to root for. Its simple home invasion setup, which was intoxicating in its simplicity, gives way eventually to a more complicated plot with a whole bunch of additional deep-rooted backstory details that get thrown at us late in the film, and they serve to supply more information about the blind man character, don't get me wrong, but they don't really make him that much scarier or more compelling than he already was. Also, characters make decisions here throughout the film that make sense logically, but not morally. Even late in the film, and you wonder whether this will be a story about characters that learn something or grow through adversity or overcome literal and figurative demons to emerge better people on the other side, you know, like most horror movies, or whether it will instead just end up being a series of things that happen when sociopaths collide. And in the end, as there were in the beginning, I had a few logic and emotion-based questions that the movie just could not answer. I was being deliberate earlier when I called this movie very lean and very mean. While not very gory in terms of its violence, it ultimately feels crueler and nastier the movie than I expected. And I'm not sure I was 100% satisfied with how the movie set up and how it ultimately resolved the home invasion at the center of its plot. However, however, there was a lot to like about what unfolds in that house. For one thing, I like how this blind man isn't Daredevil. He doesn't have super radar or even super hearing. What we hear, he hears. And when he walks into a room, he is indeed capable of being fooled, and believably so, especially if you follow the advice of the movie's title. Those silent passages when the teenagers try to evade Lang as he lumbers about, sniffs around, and dispatches his trusty, vicious devil dog who does have the power of sight are truly suspenseful and very well shot and executed. I also like how the movie plays fair with the geography of this killer labyrinth of a house. Right from the outset, when our characters enter the stage, there's this long tracking shot that gives us the lay of the land. Locked door over here, hallway over there, air vent and crawl space down there, silently sweeping the battlefield, showing us all of the little nooks and crannies that will be important later. And while a whole movie of this effect would have been tiresome, setting one entire climactic sequence in grayed out, instead of the usual green, night vision was a very nice touch at just the right time. Now you're gonna see what I see.
That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Now, seriously, for realsies, I close the door on summer 2016. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos, and while you're there, click subscribe so we can keep doing what we do. Tell me what you thought of Don't Breathe, or what you thought of this summer at the movies in general, in the comments below, and click the thumbs up icon to voice your approval. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and I want you to see what I see.